and making sure we know what they are so we're ready for the test. Oh, see, I use this because I'm <laughs> You don't want to use these. All right, um, so we will go over the last bit of notes over milkies and centipedes today, and then we will um, also talk about lab expectations and the procedures so we're ready for our first dissection tomorrow. As we move forward, since we're doing so many dissections, it's going to become kind of second nature for us what to do. But since this is our first one, we need to go over what is expected of you during the lab. So first of all, we're going to talk about millipedes. Millipedes are in the class Diplopoda, die for two, poda means foot, and they have two pairs of legs per one segment. So for each segment of their body, they actually have four legs total two on each side for each segment. They are among the first terrestrial <coughs> animals and they can have anywhere from 11 to 100 segments depending on what type of millipede it is. Um, their body is also more rounded. With centipedes we'll see that their body is more flattened. But with millipedes their body is a lot more rounded and curved. Like a roly-poly. Kind of like a roly-poly. So this is what a millipede looks like if you were to flip them upside down. You can see that there are four legs, two on each side for each segment of the body. It does give them a lot of legs. They have a lot of legs. Now this is in Google Classroom, so you don't have to write it all down. But they are mostly found in the ground, under rocks, in the leaf litter, things like that, under a log, because they are super important decomposers. Decomposers are animals that eat dead stuff to help kind of break them down and return the nutrients back to the soil. And so they are really important with eating those dead things and returning the nutrients back to the environment. They are not dangerous to people except they do have these glands that produce hydrogen cyanide that is kind of an acid that acts as a repellent to predators. So it's kind of their defense technique. Um, I worked with these at the zoo for a while. The zoo had trouble like keeping them alive, so we only had them like the first year or two I was there. But when you would hold them, we had the African giant millipedes. They would produce this purpley substance that would kind of stain your hands purple, and that was that hydrogen cyanide. It never really hurt my hand. It never really like made me sick or anything. And after a program, I'd always wash my hands to get it off. But that was their defense mechanism, and it prevents other animals from eating them. Um, immature millipedes get more legs and se segments each time they molt. Remember with their exoskeleton, they have to molt just like spiders and insects. And so each time they molt, they get more segments and more legs. So the bigger the millipede, the longer that it's been alive. Once they reach adulthood, just like the spiders and insects, they're not going to molt very often, if at all. And so they've reached their kind of adult height or length. Have you ever had like an
saw you, just a little tiny screech owl? I thought, I think owls are like one of the coolest animals, but I, I'm scared of owls. Like, I, I'm scared to death of them. Well, the little screech owl, we called him screech, of course. He was, he was just a sweet. Um, the barn owl, that one was kind of moody, and he'd always try and attack you when you went to get See, him. those are, those ones are the pretty ones. They are. And I love working with them. We won't let each other get back. We used to let the owls fly around in our office. Yeah, no, that would not happen. I'd be too afraid I'd be talent in the side of my head or something. And some chillers running around in balls, like those big, like, hamster balls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're probably expensive. <laughs> they're not really, like, talking animals. They're trying to, like, stand off. Good place for bugs. mouth part so this one's turned over with the biting mouth part here are some sensory organs and these are showing also that there's one <coughs> leg on each side per segment so less legs than we saw in the millipedes um, they are fast they can move really quick and they are predators they eat other insects they have venom claws which are modified appendages called maxillipeds so the claws that inject the venom aren't technically part of their mouth part. Just like the um, scorpion has a tail that has venom, these appendages have venom. The venom is not typically deadly to humans, again, like a wasp sting, so it's not gonna feel pleasant, but it's not gonna kill you either. The young tend to look like the adults, but smaller, and again, their legs and segments get added as they molt. Just, that's the same as the milky. <laughs> what does it mean by not typically? 
if people have a reaction to it, then it could be more serious. Um, you never know how bodies are going to respond if a person's already sick and has a weakened immune system and that kind of thing. And imagine dying during surgery. That would suck. It really would. Yeah. So, like, do they have, like, kind of like appendages stuff that, like, the crayfish do, like, the reproduction wise? Or, like, how do they, like, Sure, but I think they are like a scorpion in that they lay down a sperm packet that the female picks up. I think that's how it works. Good question. Yeah, that was the one thing I remember watching that video last night. I'm like, the little, the little tiny little heart things <laughs> on their stomachs. <laughs> well, at least you remember something. Yeah, because I thought it was really weird. Wait till you see a snake poop, and then you just get something. <laughs> it's gross. I didn't know that grass went to the grocery yesterday, so I put one in the pocket and then I All right, oh, now, yeah. these are the ones that you'll be responsible for knowing for the test. That one's on the bottom is scary. How centipede? These are actually fairly common. You find them in the basements, just like you would find those um, Jerusalem crickets or camel crickets, they're also called. You find those in the basements sometimes. Yeah, they're um, so how centipede is an example of that. This one is the one that is pretty common. And same thing with this one, the common millipede. So these you might find. I think somebody, I don't know if it was this class or another class, found a centipede um, for their collection. A uh, giant red-headed centipede and then the African giant millipede. And again, this one was the one I worked with at the zoo. They were, their feet felt really weird. They would often curl up in a little ball when they weren't happy and you just, have a little ball of melody. Um, Polly does met this mida is this type of centipede which has um, the that's found under leaf litter. All right so other things about of arthropods this is also in Google Classroom. Roly-poly we've already mentioned that is also known as a pill bug is actually an isopod which is a terrestrial crustacean. So it's a type of crustacean. Remember, crustaceans are like crabs and um, crayfish and those kinds of things. Well, this one is actually living on land, but in that group. There are more arthropods than all other animals combined. So this is the order arthropod. Um, classified as a millipede, the pneumo, pneumodesmus pneumoni, which inhabited the planet 428 million years ago, is considered the oldest land animal on Earth. So millipede was the oldest land animal and the first to be coming onto land. Can be found on all continents, arthropods in general, including Antarctica. So just some interesting facts about arthropods in general. They can live in Antarctica. Mm -hmm. Probably not in the really, really cold areas, probably more along the margins.
did pigs as freshmen. So I'm getting some newbies. Okay. So here are the basics with dissection. Don't just cut right into it. Okay. You need to identify the parts on the outside first. You'll be working in groups of three to four. I think I have enough crayfish for, I mean, you can't do partners because we don't have enough crayfish for that. Um, I will. Okay. So with COVID and everything, we're supposed to keep you spaced out. So if you feel the need, I would encourage mask wearing, okay? Um, because we will be all leaning over the same space, so just kind of keep that in mind. Also, it is always a good idea to wash your hands after a dissection. Part of cleanup, or part of what I'm grading and you know checking for is cleanup. So if you do not do a good job cleaning up, there's going to be consequences because you guys are old enough now that you can clean up after yourself and cleaning up after a lab, especially dissection, is an expectation in this class. Um, so don't touch things you shouldn't. Sometimes, not often, um, there might be things set up from a previous class or my anatomy students are doing something. So you don't want to mess with materials that are out from other classes. And so far you guys have done a good job because there's been some things out from my other classes. Um, only work with materials that you specifically need for the experiment. In this case, you'll have your dissection supplies, you'll have a tray, and you'll have your animal. So what you'll do is when we um, get to class tomorrow, you'll do your bell work. I'll give some instructions at the beginning, and then you'll divide up at the dissection tables. You'll leave your bags at your um, desks. One of you may want to have your Chromebook so that you can go through the video as you're dissecting or pull up pictures if you're not sure what you're looking at, but you all don't need your Chromebook. Um, if something gets spilled on you, rinse it off. The only thing we're working with is the chemical solution that they've been preserved in, and that solution has been modified over time where it's not terribly toxic. You should still wash your hands and be careful with your clothing, and it's gonna smell. You're gonna get used to it. We have a vent fan in here, I'll turn the vent fan on, but it's gonna smell. So just expect that. Um, I don't think we have goggles and we're not gonna use goggles for dissection, but just be careful not to squirt things in your eyes. I mean, some of these things, the crayfish are not too bad, but some of the um, animals will dissect are a little bit juicy. And so just be aware of that. Um, I will see if I can- What? Some of them are juicy. I have done so many dissections, so many things that this is like, this is not new to me at all. Um, and I have walked freshmen through dissection, so if I can do that, I'll get you guys through it just fine. Um, 
I'll try and find goggles though if you would like and see if we've got some. I kind of remember seeing some. I'll see if I can find them and pull them out. If a chemical gets in your eye, use the eye wash station. We don't have an eye wash station, which makes me a little sad because I only ever had to use it once when a freshman got bleach in their eye. Oh. Don't ask. That was quite the ordeal because they were being stupid and um, <laughs> Should I say that about students? They were not being that, smart. That <laughs> well, and then it was this whole ordeal because the parent got upset and it was like the parent called them out of school and it, it was a mess. Anyways, um, but everybody was fine. Nobody, it was, Did he lose his vision? No. It was just a little bit. And the, we put him right in the eyewash station. So the, the moral of the story is if you get something in your eye, let me know. I think the chemistry lab has an eyewash station. Yeah, um, they do? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But we can flush your eyes with water because we do have the sinks in here. So um, just be careful. And never horse around in the laboratory. You guys have been a great group. You've done great outside. You've done great following the rules. And so just kind of keep an eye. I mean, just expect that you should be on your best behavior tomorrow because we will have sharp objects out. We will have, hey, thank you. Abby? Yeah. Um, we will have sharp objects out. We will have, um, oh, chemicals out with the formaldehyde. So just don't horse around. Be good students. I know you are. Um, never play with the lab equipment or materials. So don't um, use it for things that it's not supposed to be used for. And always follow the instructions and wait until you're told to start, begin the investigation. Um, what I'll probably do is have all the dissection supplies laid out and then you will come get the supplies that you need and take them back to your table. And then I will bring the crayfish around to each group once you guys get settled. And then I'll put it on your table and then you're free to get started once you have your crayfish. But do not put your crayfish away until I come and check your group because like I said, I let you explore on your own first. Um, don't mutilate the crayfish too much. Okay, you wanna have it in good enough shape that I can go over the parts with you. If you've just torn everything up, then that's not gonna do you any good. The purpose is to learn here. So don't put anything away until I have a chance to go over it with your group and make sure you know what you're looking at, all right? Um, Never carry out unassigned experiments. This goes for more of like we're doing an actual experiment. Don't start like mixing chemicals and stuff together. Um, but we're not really gonna do much of that. Never eat or taste anything. Um, so you guys know I'm not really supposed to. Um, with the food thing, I'm kind of lax on that. But tomorrow I am more strict because you don't want these chemicals getting in your food. So any food, any drinks, your food needs to be kept in your bag. Um, drinks need to be kept at your desks and not brought to the stations tomorrow, okay? Um, just because it is a hazard. If you were to ingest any of that, it would, I mean, the amount you would ingest wouldn't be terrible, but it's still not gonna, it, it make you feel pretty sick probably. Um, includes food, drink, gum, as well as chemicals found in the lab. In my previous school, we had a completely separate lab. Like I had my classroom and there was a lab room and there's another classroom and we shared it. So it was easier to separate the food from the lab because they just didn't take it in the lab. They left it in the classroom. So just kind of be aware of that tomorrow that I'm gonna be a little stricter about that. Um, emergency equipment, we don't even really have any emergency equipment. We used to have fire blankets and chemical stuff. And um, so know where the, the sinks are in case you need to wash your hands. If you cut yourself or something, rinse it off in water. We do have band-aids and like basic first aid supplies that we can get you sorted out with. If you, we're not really gonna be using beakers and glasses and stuff, but if you were to break something, don't freak out, okay? Things break. Your safety is my first priority in lab. Your safety and you being safe is my first priority. Equipment can be replaced. We can always buy new stuff if we need to, but you guys and your safety is the most important thing. Um, we don't have to worry about lab emergencies. We won't be using anything hot that could burn down the lab. And wash your hands after every experiment. We will be using gloves, but it's still a good idea to wash your hands afterwards just to be safe. Part of the rules will be washing your tables as well and getting it clean. We'll be using soap and water to try and keep our stations clean. Um, all books and other things will be left at your desks, but 
as I mentioned, one of you may want to have your Chromebook so you can scroll through the pictures so you can watch the video again to help you identify the parts. Uh, don't put anything toward the edge of the table. You want to keep everything in the center because as we're up and moving around, it's likely you could bump into something. So keeping things in the center is important. And of course, keep your work area clean. So that means you are going to clean up appropriately. We do not throw dead things in the trash. I will have a separate bag that you will dispose of all of the dead parts in. Do not put chunks in the sink, all right? Get all of the chunks in the trash, but you will need the sinks for rinsing out your supplies and your dissection tray and those kinds of things. But I will dispose of the live products at a different time, but you're not gonna want to put them in the trash or down the sink or anything like that. If it's very liquidy, like sometimes there's a lot of liquid on the dissection tray, that's okay, all right? Just put that down the sink with a lot of water, running it down to dilute it, and that's fine. Just no chunks in the sink. Um, gas jets we don't have to worry about. If you get hurt, tell me, all right? I need to know. I'm not gonna get mad at you unless you're goofing off and I might be a little mad, but still you being safe is my number one priority, okay? Just be responsible. I know you guys are gonna do fine. You're a good group. We don't have a lab book, cut. All right, any questions on any of this? Yes. Are we gonna have a knife tomorrow? Yes. Like so the dissection tools, like the dissection tools typically consist of a scalpel, which is really sharp, with um, some scissors, some dissection scissors, and what's called a probe, but I often refer to it as a pointy thingy, um, but it's actually a probe. And sometimes we use um, pins to pin things down. Tomorrow with the crayfish, I doubt we'll need any pins. Um, the scissors and the probe are the things you're gonna use the most. A lot of people get excited when they do a dissection and they're like, oh, I get to use a scalpel. Scalpel is actually not the best thing to use in a dissection because it is very easy to damage the structures that are underneath. So most of the time when we do a dissection, I encourage the use of scissors because with scissors, you can like, when you're cutting something, you can actually pull up with the scissors and that separates it from the things that are underneath and prevents them from being damaged. I think we should go over, don't cut towards yourself. That too, don't cut towards yourself but also don't cut away from yourself that you cut into your neighbors either, because remember you'll have um, at least three other people working with you. So, um, any other questions? Comes back to being responsible with sharp objects. I haven't really had anybody cut themselves. I've had people poke themselves. Yes, yeah, you haven't done our class yet. I've done lots of freshmen though. You guys are better than freshmen. I think you can handle it. Any other questions? As far as what to wear, um, you should be able to do the dissection without getting your clothes messy. If you get the messy, that's kind of, well, I don't want to say your fault, but you weren't being careful enough. Um, so dress isn't that important. Just make sure that um, if you get something on your clothes, you wash it off. If you get it on your hands, you wash your hands. Any other questions? So like I said, tomorrow you'll come in, you will do your bell work just like normal. I'll have all the supplies ready to go. I'm gonna grab them during my plan today. And um, then we'll get started right after that. Sound good? All right, so for the rest of today, um, I'm going to bring out your <laughs> insects and you can kind of sort through your insects to see what you have, to count them, to figure out what you need. What time are we at? Okay, so we got 10 minutes. Um, so that'll probably take us the rest of class to get those things sorted so you can figure out what you've got. But any other time you have, you can prepare with those bugs because we will be quizzed over those insects on Thursday. Yes. Yes. 